guess who's got a cold? Uh, yeah, so let's review a movie on Monday. Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, a.k.a. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop AF. Get it? Uh, fortunately, most of the jokes in the movie are better than that. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty good movie. It's a pretty good Beverly Hills Cop movie. Which is to say, a Beverly Hills Cop movie. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta be honest, guys, the thing I like best about this movie is the fact that it's just a normal sequel to something. I'm probably not the last person to observe this, but despite the fact that it opens with, okay, hey, Axel's back, and here's a bunch of, you know, location shots of Detroit, and here's every song that was in the other movies playing on the radio, it pretty much drops, like, the Memberberry stuff to the other movies, other than actors coming back, you know, Judge Reinhold's back, Paul Reiser's back, Bronson Pinchot comes back, but it's, like, only in logical places where they'd be, and not in some sort of, like, oh my god, look who's back like the new fucking Ghostbusters movies where every single thing that was ever in a comedy gets to come back in a new one and get treated like this reverent serious bullshit because nerds cried about a reboot so we have to be serious about like random props and references that were never meant to be serious in this one it's just hey guys come back because they would be back and otherwise it feels like just a sequel to Beverly Hills Cop you don't even have to have watched the other sequels or the previous movie to catch up in any of this because because it's not trying to pretend that what was just a pretty good 80s comedy with a really good performance by a guy who was blowing up to be a super movie star at the time was anything more than exactly that and that's why it works uh, for what it's worth if you are jumping back in uh, the second one is good the third one isn't and this one is about as good as the second one just in a different way although since if my memory serves me Beverly Hills Cop 3 at this point was in the mid 90s so it's possible that if you you're younger than like 30, Beverly Hills Cop as a concept might mean absolutely nothing to you because your Eddie Murphy nostalgia might only run back so far as Shrek and Mulan maybe. So the gimmick of Beverly Hills Cop is that he is a black guy from Detroit where they have real crime who in each movie finds a reason to go to Beverly Hills, a rich white neighborhood where they have fake crimes except for the crime that he has to go and try to solve and show the rich Beverly Hills cops how to do real police stuff like roughing up suspects and actually using their guns and various things that should be sort of uncomfortable or have really heavy class commentary stuff but doesn't because it's mostly a vehicle for Eddie Murphy to be funny. Can we you know, get a whole movie stretched out of that premise simply based on the idea that Eddie Murphy is really cool, super talented, tells great jokes, and can have good chemistry with a cactus if you let him? Yeah, they, they actually did get like three good movies now out of that and even the third one isn't that bad it's just not as good as the other two although it is fun that this franchise is sort of like the alien movies where they're all completely different from one another the first one is just a comedy with a couple action scenes but it's about cops so it feels like an action comedy the second one almost forgets that it's supposed to be a comedy other than the fact that Eddie Murphy is in it and it's just this super violent action movie so it's sort of like the bad boys 2 of Beverly Hills cop movies and then the third one is basically a kids movie where he's fighting crime in not Disneyland and then this one is like a years 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 later generational sequel to basically the first one so really you only have to watch the first one and this one but they're all kind of fun <coughs> ramble even more when you have a cold much Bob Anyway, the premise in this one is basically the kind of premise that you do with these revival movies. Axel Foley is pushing 60 and still kicking ass because he's Eddie Murphy, but his now adult daughter is in Los Angeles and exists, apparently, working as a defense attorney for an accused cop killer, and it looks like there's a cover-up going on involving corrupt cops, and she's being strong-armed and intimidated, and she almost gets killed, so Axel heads out to try to help her. But they have an estranged father-daughter relationship, because movie, which they have to work through by solving the case together. There are jokes, there are laughs, Judge Reinhold is there. Has the jury reached a verdict? Hold it! Billy, I need your help, man. All right, Axel! <laughs> I'm sorry, we're all out of bananas. Axel? Don't go. He tries to solve the crime using his methods. Sometimes he succeeds. She tries to do other methods. Sometimes she succeeds. They work their stuff out. A couple of good action scenes, mostly involving Axel having to drive various ridiculous, inappropriate vehicles to do police stuff. And hey, 
hey, there's Kevin Bacon as the kind of shady cop who's involved in things and is almost definitely the bad guy, and hey, turns out, the bad guy. The movie doesn't even pretend that we're not supposed to figure out immediately that this is the bad guy, to the extent that even Axel shows up and goes, yeah, okay, so this is the bad guy, right? Everyone can tell this is the bad guy, and it's got that kind of easygoing charm for it that can either be insufferable or agreeable, depending on how well the movie gets in key with the audience of, yeah, look, you don't actually care about the plot of this, but we're going to have just enough of one to get it going because you're here to hang out with Eddie and be reminded that these movies ruled, and it works. It has that good energy, the action scenes are all very well directed, and the back and forth actually has some real snap to it. The business doesn't feel forced. The older characters get to be right exactly enough of the time about, no, the old way is right. The younger characters get to be right exactly the right amount of times about, no, this is a new way to do it. And Eddie Murphy is exactly the right sort of actor with exactly the right sort of energy and legacy with audiences to sell the idea of a guy who is like, like hard nose and has made mistakes, but like not that hard nose. He's not really doing Harrison Ford in Force Awakens here because he doesn't need to. It's a different kind of thing and it works. On balance, this is a much better version of basically the kind of revival movie that every actor still working that had a franchise like this at one point keeps doing. It's much better than the Ghostbusters version. I don't know that it's like reaching the, uh, the, the perfectionist heights that Top Gun Maverick did where there's no way this should have worked, but it does see also the Rocky movies with Creed, although that does do enough to kind of become its own beast. It's right down the middle. So I'm going to call this one a 7 out of 10. It works. I liked it. Love Eddie Murphy. Almost, almost good enough to make you forget that Netflix is a horrible soul-sucking company that represents everything wrong with the entertainment industry and the complete destruction of everything good and proper about movie making and the movie going experience.